Our topic is Be Transformed, Renew Your Mind. And the um, way that Paul says to be transformed is by renewing our minds. So we're going to look at that in context as well as a couple other verses. We're going to start in 1 Kings uh, chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, in 1 Kings, God appears to Solomon in a dream. And one of the kind of wonders to me about uh, the uh, Old Testament is that the expectation is that if God appears to you in a dream, it is just as good as if God appears to you when you're awake. And uh, I'm not sure if you would, ha I don't, would not have that. My dreams aren't that impressive. Now, maybe if God showed up in one of my dreams, it would be impressive. I don't know. But the expectation in the uh, Old Testament is if God promises you something in a dream, it's just like God came to you in the daytime and promised you something. So God appears to Solomon in a dream by night and says to Solomon, ask what I should give you. So there's a lot of things God might say to you as if God has a face-to-face -face encounter with you. You might have a lot of expectations about what God would like to talk to you about. How nice if this is what God said. Ask whatever you want. What would you like? Uh, and Solomon uh, has a long answer. Uh, if you're reading along, we're going to skip up to verse 9 where he makes his request. But first he lays out the context. The context is he's just been appointed king and he knows that it's a big job, and he does not necessarily have all the ability that he needs. So he says to God, give your servant an understanding mind to govern your people. Because you've made me king, let me have what I need to do the job that you've given me to do. And uh, that's a request that's really helpful if you've just been promoted, and maybe it was a long time ago. If it's worth asking God, for the ability to do the things that you are now in charge of doing. So if you have a growing family, to ask God for the ability to be a great parent. If you're uh, working for an employer or for yourself, uh, to ask God for the ability to do that well. Solomon said, give your servant an understanding mind to govern your people. So he wants to have an understanding mind. God uh, answered his request and was very happy that he asked for that. Romans 12, uh, verse 2. This is our theme verse that's causing us to look at this reflection today. Do not be conformed to this world. So I don't know if you've ever had the chance of sitting or laying on one of those mattresses that conforms to you over time. It's not the same as a hard mattress that you conform to it. Uh, there are some mattresses that as you lay on it, it's kind of creepy because it gradually makes way until it's got a U-sized dent in it. So wherever your hip is or wherever various parts of your body are, you can see it because it's got it conformed to you and <clears throat> when you're in that bed once it has conformed to you takes a couple minutes maybe five but it, it takes a while but it happens once it's conformed to you if you try to roll over it's not so easy because you're in a divot that's your size and so uh, you can't move as easy it's conformed to you Paul says, don't conform to the world. When you conform yourself to the world, you will reach a spot where it's hard to move. It's hard to change. It's hard to be different because you will be molded to the same. And there are many people who really, it's their goal to be like the world, right? They would like to fit in. They would like everybody to like them. They would like to be popular but not stand out. Uh, Paul says, don't be conformed to the world. Jesus says that you're light, different from everybody else. You're salt, different from everybody else. Uh, and, and your differences are helpful to the world around you. The world around you that doesn't yet know God 
in fullness that doesn't yet know Jesus or the Holy Spirit needs you to be different, needs you to not be conformed. Paul says, don't be conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the way to be transformed, Paul says, is to renew your mind. So you might expect that what would be most helpful is for him now to have a list of ways to renew your mind. If you're following along in the Bible, you see that that list is missing. Uh, you're kind of on your own to figure out what would renew your mind. Although if you ask a few people around here, there may be some corporate guesses that, that we could all agree on. Uh, one of the ways to renew your mind would be to read God's Word on a regular basis. Uh, there's plenty of people who are shouting at you from television who will not be shouting at you God's will for you or God's word for you or God's encouragement. So as a counterbalance, it's very helpful to read God's word on your own on a regular basis. Uh, it's helpful to be in the company of, uh, of saints who are often appearing very much <clears throat> like they are saints and sinners both. So as you hang out with saints, you discover, boy, there's parts of that saint that seem unredeemed or in need of a little bit conformed to the world instead of to Jesus. Uh, you'll be able to see people in process. And, uh, and some people will not be great examples, but in the company of believers, you will find some people who consistently, every day, throughout their lifetime are people, in some cases, extraordinarily quiet and peaceable who always do the right thing, who always are loving, who constantly are doing their... There are other people who are also great examples that sometimes really mess up and are fast to say, I'm so sorry. That wasn't the kind of person I meant to be. It's not who I want to be and they apologize and start over. Uh, so uh, what are ways you can renew your mind? One would be to read the Bible on a regular basis. One would be to be in the community of people who love Jesus and are active and to join them in something they're doing that will be helping uh, the poor or help whatever activity they're doing. Uh, there's lots of ways you can renew your mind, but the value of it is high. Paul says, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God. When you spend time renewing your mind, you start to figure out the ideas that God has that nobody else can see. What's the will of God in the situations of your life? And it's very, very helpful to have uh, the Holy Spirit's direction and to have the ability to perceive what God's attitude is about the people you're surrounded with, about the situation you're in. Because a lot of times you'll be in a situation where everybody else is losing their head and it turns out that God is still God. And that it's not out of control. It may not be optimum, but God has a great plan for what everybody else is distressed about. I wasn't explicitly, explicitly talking about the political system in America, but if you want to apply it to that today, you can. There are lots of places where you can look out at the world and say, God, thank you so much that you're in charge, that you are moving with power through, uh, through all the nations, through every life. Uh, when you transform yourself by the renewing of your mind. You can discern what is the will of God, and then Paul tells us some clues that we have for recognizing God's will. It'll be good and acceptable and perfect. Now those need some definition, because what you think is good might be different from what God thinks is good. What you think is acceptable, I should never have any trouble. I should never be hurt. I've got pain receptors all over my body, but they should never come into use. No, God put them there for a good reason. It's good sometimes to be in pain, to keep you from making bad decisions. 
Uh, so what's good and acceptable and perfect from God's standards? If you use that as a guide, uh, then you'll be able to see much more of the will of God. But the way to get there is to transform your mind. Now we uh, did not start with verse 1. And it may be helpful to back up. We've been reading the second verse of chapter 12. It may be helpful to back up one verse just so you get the context. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Paul starts out this conversation by saying that your bodies, the things that you do, the activity that you're engaged in, what, what you do, can be offered to God as worship. So you can keep your job as a plumber, school superintendent, movie ticket taker. Obviously, I haven't hit too many of the jobs here, right? But whatever your home uh, person uh, crafting a great home, whatever your job is, in that job, you can let your days be a worship to God. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're talking to others. And there are some settings where you can't talk to others about your beliefs during your job, but you can, throughout the day, walk through your day with love. You can, throughout the day, be blessing everyone that you see, and people will notice the difference and eventually ask you. Uh, how you live your life can be offered to God as a worship. So as we're looking at Romans 12, first verse is about what you do, your body, how you act. Second verse is about your mind, that as you renew your mind, you're transformed. And those affect your spirit. So the being that we have, body, mind, and spirit, it's all interconnected. And you can harm your body, but it's not a good idea because it hurts your mind and your spirit also. What's uh, best is to uh, do things that are good for all three, body, mind, and spirit. Uh, we're going to take a look at something that may, for some people, seem completely disconnected. But I think it, it will be helpful for, for some people today anyway. It's a story Jesus tells in Matthew 21. Jesus tells us a lot of very short stories. And if for this particular story, he starts out saying, what do you think? So he's going to give a story and then ask you for your opinion. Uh, what do you think, Jesus says? Uh, there was a father who had two sons, and he said to one, son, go work in the vineyard today. We don't know the temperature, but probably it was sunny and hot. Son, go work in the vineyard today. And the first son said, no way. I will not. Perhaps you've heard that at your own house. Perhaps you've said it, hopefully decades ago. Uh, but a request to take out the garbage, mop the floor, uh, hit the toilet, uh, whatever it is. Uh, the person, you can't make me. You're not my boss. Uh, we won't go into the theology of that. It may in fact be that they are your boss, but, uh, but uh, the son in this case just said, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, luckily, the dad had two sons. The first son was a washout. But, Jesus says, he later changed his mind. And he went. And he went and worked in the vineyard. He did what he was asked. Do the grapes care that the, fun, that the son first said, no, I'm not going to do that? No, the grapes got tended. They're happy for that son. Second son. The father went to the second and said the same thing. Son, go work in the vineyard today. And the second son, oh, thank goodness we've got a good guy. 
said, I go, sir. Wouldn't you like that? I mean, if you've got kids, the kid to say sir to you or ma'am? Yes, I'm going to do exactly what you said. Oh, thank goodness, I finally got a son or daughter who's, who's <laughs> this is really great, except he didn't go. Uh, there are many cultures where this is just built into the culture. Would you bring me a cup of coffee? Oh, yes. Two days later. Is my coffee coming? Yes. That's true not just for little things. True for gigantic things. Will you help me on this project that's going to take us three years? Oh, yes. Uh, there are some people who don't keep their word. I go, sir, but he didn't go. So Jesus started out by saying, what do you think, right? So pretty soon he's going to come and ask you what you think, and now's the time. He says, which of the two did the will of the Father? Uh, we'll see how tricky this question is. How many people think that the one who did the will of the Father was the guy who said, no, I'm not going to do it, and then went and actually did it? Can I see your hands? Okay, we have a fair number of people here who said that. How about, how many people thought the guy that did the will of the Father was the son who said, oh yes, I'm going to do that, but then didn't? Can I see the hands of people who, it looks like everybody got scared into a clear majority. We have 100% voting for the uh, first son. Uh, yeah, what you do with your body matters. It's nice what you think with your mind. And what you think with your mind can uh, set you up for disappointment, for sorrow, for making a tragic error, or for good things, for enjoying something that nobody else can enjoy. This, how are you so at peace in the middle of what's going on? You know that God has it covered. And that you, um, your, your mind can be very helpful what your body does also matters. Do not be conformed to this world, Paul says. It's easy to be conformed. There are times when it's nice to fit in. But sometimes when you fit in, it's like that body on the, on the bed that conforms to you. Eventually, you can't move easily a different direction. And there are times when you need to stand out because the world around you is counting on someone else knowing that there's something different from what is being presented to them by the media and by everyone around them. Be transformed by the renewingness of your mind. So the question for you today is, what will you do to renew your mind? One of the nice things about preaching is that it ends. And you can go home and be completely unaffected. Just hear it with the mind and take no action with the body. And James says, well, that's kind of worthless. The only time that God's word is transformative is when it starts to change you. It's true, but it may not this day be true for you. You may think it's not true for you. There are plenty of people who didn't come here today, but that's their reason for not coming here today. They don't believe it has any impact on them or that it's not for them. Uh, but you, knowing the truth, what will you do to renew your mind? Uh, there's plenty of temptation that you will encounter this week and last week throughout your life to be transformed and conformed to the world. But what will you do to counter that, to renew your mind and be transformed to what God has for you? We're going to take a moment for prayer. God, thank you for opening us to your ideas that we are beloved, 
that you care for us so deeply that you sent Jesus not just to live and show us how to live, but also to die in our place. And when Jesus died, before he died, he said, it's good that I do this because then you can have the Holy Spirit. So we ask God that you help us now to receive your Holy Spirit. And throughout the coming week and throughout our lifetime that you help us to renew our minds so that we are able to discern your will and quickly and joyfully do what you desire. Thank you that you are so good and that we can trust you and know that your way is best. We praise you. Amen.